All right, so the third and final type of problem that we're going to see with dealing with matrices of linear transformations is that you're going to get the following. So you're going to get a transformation between different vector spaces. Vector spaces and different bases. So uh, you're going to be given a linear transformation and uh, they're going to give you the input vector space, the output vector space, um, what the transformation does, and you need to find the matrix of transformation um, between the input vector space and the output vector space, which are not the standard bases. So you're not, it's, we're not going to be dealing with the standard bases here, and I'll show you in a sec. So, for example, we have this map T that sends R3 to P1R, okay? And T of ABC is equal to A minus 3C plus 2B plus CX. All right, so what, what goes on here? Well, we, we, we're given also the following. You're given a basis for R3, which is equal to uh, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, I'm not sure what I'm trying to do here, 0, 1, 2, negative 1, 2, 0, and this is B. Okay. And you're going to be given a basis for P1R, which is going to be 1 plus X and 2 plus X. All right. And you're going to call this C. So the matrix of transformation then is actually going to be T, B, C, because you're going from basis B in R3 to uh, basis C in uh, P1R. So, okay, and how do we find this? All right, so step one is just like the first type of problem we saw, is that we want to see where the basis elements go. So, see where bases go. So, what I'm going to need to do then is I need to take T and apply it to the basis elements, which in this case are 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 2, and negative 1, 2, 0. So where do these go? So t of 1, 1, negative 1, 0 is equal to um, 1 minus 0, uh, 1 minus 3 times 0, which is 0, plus 2b, so 2 times negative 1 plus 0x. So this is 1 minus 2x, all right? t of 0, 1, 2 is going to be 0 minus uh, 3 times 2 plus uh, 2 times 1 plus 2. So this is then six minus, uh, negative six plus four X. And then T of negative one to zero is equal to uh, negative one uh, minus zero plus, let's, this is four, two times two uh, plus zero. So this is equal to negative one plus four X. Okay. and so in the other problem then what we in in the other type of problem in the number one type of problem we would just take these guys and we would throw them into a matrix all right that idea holds but can you tell me which bases are these guys expressed under right and the and the answer is all right the input vectors right these are expressed under basis B, right? These 
input vectors are expressed under this basis right here. Right? Uh, these are the bases of R3 that are B, right? So um, in the first type of problem, we plugged in the standard bases, but these are bases B, right? However, these outputs, these three outputs right here, these are expressed in standard bases of P1R because I just plugged in the basis into the transformation, I get an output, but the output is gonna be in the standard basis of P1R. But our matrix of transformation has to take into account that our basis for P1R is not the standard basis, but instead this wonky basis C that's formed with one plus X and two plus X. So what do we need to do next? Well, all right, let's just throw these guys in a matrix for now. And so T um, of B to E, right? Be, uh, let's just call the standard basis of P1R, let's call that E, right? So T of B to E is the following matrix, where I just take these three guys in blue and I'll throw them into column vectors. So again, uh, here's the basis for P1R, right? And it's one and X right now, right? Because we're only dealing with the standard base. We're only dealing with the standard basis right now. And so that means I just put one, negative two, uh, negative six, four, and negative one and four. All right. In the order that is T of one, negative one, zero, T of zero, one, two, and T of negative one, two, zero, because that's the order that they're given up here. And that's the order in which the bases are given, so that's the way I have to put them in order. Okay, but what do I need to do? I need to take this base, this I need to take this matrix, and now I need to essentially apply a change of basis to it. So I need to apply a change of basis matrix to this matrix of uh, where basis B went. So I sent basis B into P1R expressed in the standard basis. And now I need to express this matrix in terms of this wonky basis C. And how do I do that? Okay, how do I express that basis in terms of a wonky basis C? Well, the idea is this. We can have a change of basis matrix P that takes E and turns it into a C, right? And so now we need to take the change. So step two is to find the change of basis matrix in the output space from standard basis to uh, basis C, all right? And so, yeah, so we call this PCE, right? Because P or PEC, right? Or PEC, right? Where we do the following, we put the basis of C, right? On the left and we put the basis of E on the right. And so the basis of C are one plus X, two plus X. So one plus one X and then two plus one X, all right? So this is one and this is X. And on the right-hand side, we have our standard basis, which is just one and X, okay? So we have one and we have X. And what do I need to do? So if you remember from change of basis, I need to reduce this to the identity matrix on the left-hand side. And so I get here one, uh, one two, zero, negative one, one, zero, uh, negative one, one. So that's zeroing out uh, this guy. And then this reduces to one, zero, one, zero, uh, one, zero, negative one, two, zero, negative one, negative one, one. And then finally, 
one zero zero negative uh, one zero zero positive one and then negative one two one negative one all right so now this matrix here is p e c keep on writing it backwards happens to me too i know all right so now i find the change of basis matrix so what does this do well now t c b or t b c is equal to p e c times t b e all right so i take this matrix right here t b e and now i need to multiply in front by this matrix the change of basis matrix in the output space all right and so step three is to multiply them. And so I get negative one, two, one, negative one times T E B, which is one, negative two, negative six, four, and negative one, four. Okay. And what does this result in? This results in negative five, 14, nine, three, negative 10, negative five. And this is going to be my change of basis matrix expressed in basis C. Expressed in basis C, underlined a trillion times in purple. I'm going to do it again. Um, so again, my input vector space and my output vector space are different. And my input vector space has a wonky basis. And my output vector space has a wonky basis. And so we have this three-step process where we find uh, a transformation matrix, and then we find a change of basis matrix, and then we multiply them together, okay? And yeah, so these are the three types of linear transformation problems you're gonna see. I'm actually not sure um, if there's anything else in linear transformations I wanna do. There's a bunch of stuff in the middle from 6.2 uh, to 6.4. So this step, uh, this last problem, um, from number three, this is a six five thing. So this is from chapter six five. The first two problems are from chapter six one. And six two to six four, some professors cover it, some professors don't. And I'll, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna cover those in my videos. Uh, I think I'm gonna move on to chapter seven, but we'll see. Uh, so, yep. So that's all for linear transformations for now, and we're going to move on to then chapter seven. Uh, probably the most useful thing, maybe, in this entire course, which is going to be about eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So, yep.